hello guys hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel my name is cynthia i'm a second year trainee in cancer genomics so this is going to be a very quick video i thought of jumping up here just to say what i want to say quickly because i feel it's time sensitive of course the stp application opened today i literally just came back from work but i'm hopping on here to make this video because i feel it's a time sensitive information that i need to pass to you guys or whoever might find it helpful but before i get into the video i would like to remind you all that i don't work directly with the national school of healthcare science i am a trainee i'm just passing information and tips or things i i feel i feel might be helpful to you guys so please don't take every information you get from me verbatim the best place to get all the information you need is from the national school of healthcare science website so ensure you visit there and get all the information you need however i'll be talking um however for this video i'll be talking about the stp supporting information for 2026 i'll also be focusing mainly on the question two that you guys have been asked to answer so for this year the questions are the same as last year so go to the school website and find out what the questions are I might just put it up here for you guys to see just in case you've not seen it so go to the school website and see it i think the first question is about your motivation for applying to the stp the second question is your understanding of the role of a clinical scientist and the third question is what skills you have that makes you an ideal training clinical scientist now this video i'm going to focus on the second question this is because i've seen a few essay and um i think it's very important that i address a pattern i've been seeing so far in the second question i am a trainee i'm not a clinical scientist guys so this is just what i think might be helpful in answering the second question so if as a trainee i'm already having a particular reaction about the pattern i'm seeing in the second question then probably is what coming up here to just say it to you guys now that you're writing your supporting information so the second question says what is your understanding of the role of a clinical scientist within your chosen specialty so i'm going to make a second i'm going to make a follow-up video and that video is specifically going to be addressing who a clinical scientist in cancer genomics is this is my specialty that is what i understand so i'm going to make a video try it because one of my one of my goal with this channel and all the, everything i'm doing about the stp one of the goal of stp with cynthia is to demystify the role of a clinical scientist so what is your understanding of the role of a clinical scientist? It's not an opportunity for you to talk about yourself because it doesn't make sense that you will just spend one paragraph answering the question, then spend the other time in the, bar, in the section talking about yourself. The question has not asked you to talk about yourself. It said, what is your understanding of the role of a clinical scientist? If I were applying for the STP in 2026, if I have to talk about myself, I will just mention it in passing. I think I made a video last year and because the questions this year are exactly the same with what you had last year. And the only difference is that the third section this year is 500 words, while last year it was 250. So now you have, a, you have more words to play around. So yeah, let's get back into it. So I think I made a video last year and I said, if I were applying for the STP in 2025 and I'm answering the second section, I will talk about the role of a clinical scientist and i'll talk about what i've done or the skills i have that make me fit into it i don't know i think i said something like that but that is just like a statement that doesn't mean you should then focus the entire section talking about yourself it's not a personal statement and it's not an opportunity for you to start talking about yourself you need to answer the question correctly. I think the aim of this section is trying to assess, do you understand what you are getting into? Do you know who a clinical scientist is? Do you understand the specialty you are applying to? I think the assessor needs to know if you understand what you are getting into. So I know that we've always said, or most people have always advised, and I also give that advice, that you should use examples to demonstrate how you meet the person specification of the STP. But if you look at this information here, I got this directly from the school website. Yes, it says you should write against the person specification and the job description of the STP you don't necessarily need to cover all the points you should pick the point that 
most um shows your skill and everything so that means you don't necessarily need to talk because come to think of it the pattern of the essay has changed compared to when i did my own application so for us we wrote against the person specification of the stp but you guys you have particular questions that you are expected to answer so if you are targeting to answer or to meet up all the points on this person specification your essay might go out of context remember this is an essay and it's supposed to be authentic. So if you're trying to meet up all the points, rather than trying to make it flow, you might eventually miss out on what you are supposed to be saying. I don't know if that makes sense. So before you jump into answering this section, you need to do a thorough research to build a good understanding of who a clinical scientist within your chosen specialty is. If I were in your shoes, first of all, I would go online and search who is a clinical scientist in blah, 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 in cardiac science, in whatever your specialty is. The answer you get might not be comprehensive. So I think there's a space on the National School of Healthcare Science website where they talk about different specialties as well. And again, if I wear your shoes, I will also try to understand the specialty first. Before I continue, there are a lot of open days that are booked between this week and next week. Please, I will advise you to attend those open days because the information you get there might also help to may give you a clear understanding of what your specialty is about. I think the application is open up until 16th of January, if I'm not mistaken, please, if I'm not mistaken, double check on the school website. I think the application is open up until next week. So this week and next week, there are a lot of open days. I think for my GLH, my genomic lab hub, we have our own open day next week, Monday. So we're going to be talking about cancer genomics, genomics and bioinformatics, I think, and genomics counseling as well. So check for open days and attend and it will help you to build your understanding. If you don't understand what the role is about, then how are you going to write this section? If you spend 70 to 80% of this section talking about yourself, then I don't think you are getting it right. So if you want to mention something you've done, then you should mention it in passing, just something that will buttress a point you are trying to make. Also search for the clinical scientist job, the HCPC registered clinical scientist job description, because some jobs have expired, but they are still there online. Just search for clinical scientist in cancer genomics job, clinical scientist in cardiac science, clinical scientist in whatever your specialty is, search for the role. It will bring out the job description. That is the only way you know what is expected of these people. You will see the different things they do. Apart from, <clears throat> apart from their daily jobs that they do, I don't know if it's the same for other specialties, but in my life, in my lab, we also have their role, the role they play in quality, in maintaining quality. They are part of the quality management system. In the NHS, quality is a whole big deal. So it's part of your job to maintain quality and ensure that the result you are giving out is accurate, is correct and all that. They have training roles. They train other members of the team. They also, in the NHS, most department or literally every department work as part of the MDT, the multidisciplinary team. So check out all those things. And for each of the job description you are going to be seeing for those job adverts, research it further to increase your understanding. They have the role they play in troubleshooting and in solving problems in the lab. So when you talk about troubleshooting, if you talk about the technical team and you are running a, 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 a an assay or whatever in the lab, if there is a failed run, the clinical scientist is who they will raise this issue to. So it's their responsibility to conduct, um, what is it called? Corrective and preventive action. The kind of research to find out what went wrong and they'll try to find the solution to it. Also, another way to understand the role of a clinical scientist is to go to some of the interviews I've done. I always ask every trainee, who is a clinical scientist in your specialty? And they will explain that. So whatever they say, whatever points they've made, you can go online. And research clearly on that so that it will help your understanding. Again, go to Time for Tea with me. I think she has a complete interview of all the um, of all the specialties. Listen to it and try to see if there was a point where they talked about who a clinical scientist in their chosen specialty is. Chat people up on LinkedIn. Chat people up on Instagram. Also find trainee clinical scientists as well. You can ask them, hey, I'm trying to improve my understanding on this in order to approach my essay better. I may be confused or I'm trying to do my research about who a clinical scientist within this, this, this is. Please, can you tell me more about who a clinical scientist is? Can you tell me what 
they do can you do blah 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 so again i'm going, going to say this i'll be looking at my computer because i made some point so where your experience does fit in but you need to be very careful if this is going to make you to focus on talking about yourself if 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 mentioning something will make me to spend lines talking about myself then i'll just focus on answering what the question is so your experience should support your understanding of the role and not replace explaining the role so you shouldn't spend good good word numbers that you should you should use explaining the rule you shouldn't spend it in talking about your experience you should mention the experience in passing for example through this blah 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 experience i observed blah 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 which helped me to see or understand better that these people are able to do blah 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 better do you understand don't see this as difficult don't see this as so much it's just something you should do to bring out the best and again if you eventually get into the stp this is a good start because the stp is <laughs> you're going to read you're going to study you're going to learn new things you're going it's very intense so this is like preparing you for the role you are coming into you are welcome so just go online do all the research that you need have that understanding before you start writing your essay so the focus of, of this section if i wear your shoes it should remain the role the specialty and the patient impact very important the patient impact so you should avoid turning it into a personal statement listing skills without linking them to the rule let's try to summarize everything we've said section one is very straightforward what is your motivation for applying to the stp is the opportunity to sell yourself why do you want to get into the stp in your chosen specialty so that is like what is your connection? At what point? For instance, I have a biochemistry degree and all of a sudden I'm applying to cancer genomics. What, where, at what point did that interest come in? So that is what section one should be talking about. And why are you doing it through the STP? Again, when you come to the second section, we've talked about so much about it. Don't spend time talking about yourself. It's not a personal statement. They didn't say you should start talking about yourself. You should mention yourself in passing to buttress a point. Don't focus and start talking about when I did this, I've done that, you've done that. No. Tell whoever is reading your essay, I understand the role I'm getting into. This is who they are. This is what they do. This is an understanding of, uh, this is something I've done in the past that kind of demonstrate an understanding of who they are. It's an essay. So write it in a way that it will flow. It will be authentic. It will make the reader understand that, yes, I think this person understands what she is, he or she is getting into. Then the third point, who is an ideal trainee clinical scientist? This is, and now you guys have 250 more words, right? So this is the part that should give you more things to talk about. Do you get what I mean, right? So talking about an ideal trainee clinical scientist, I think my job here is to tell you, like the skills that is working for me now that I think you should try to model from the STP core person specification. And there are so many things to talk about. So for me, I think the pattern of answering this question should be, I understand who an ideal training clinical scientist is. This is what I've done that shows or demonstrates that I am this person. Skills training require, you see organizational skills, you see planning skills, you see prioritization skills, you see managing pressure. These skills are some of the things I use every day because the workload is a lot. You need to show that you are able to balance. I think it's, part, it's somewhere there in the STP core person specification, um, pr managing pressure, balancing um, workload, because you have clinical workload, you have rotation, then you have the university part, you have conferences that you attend, you have so many things going on as a trainee, you have different people that are involved in your training, so you should be able to balance all these things, you should know when to post the uni side and focus on the work based side, you should know when to post that and focus on the uni side, what, so what have you done that show that you, you are able to manage pressure, prioritize, organize and all that, you can talk about presentation skills as well there are some 
trust where training is trained together and they all present do you understand all these are on the core person specification of the stp so they can be transferable skills you get my point even talking about the research skills right now i'm doing my stp project i'm conducting a literature review and all that so this can do you, do you get my point so, so just focus on talking about an ideal training clinical scientist in this pattern is 500 words as well so you should also try to use up your words but if using up your words will make you to start saying unnecessary things then i think you, just, you should just stick to saying what is most important i wish you guys the best i wish you can see my heart i want everybody to get in because the sdp has i don't know it's stressful and all that but it's what i like i don't know it's just it's, it has just been giving me the vibe and everything i expected from it do you get my point and my trust is also amazing my colleagues are amazing so the stp has been very good for me so i wish everyone the best please if you have any questions drop it in the comment section you can reach out to me on linkedin instagram i always try my best to answer all this now i'm still a trainee I don't really have that time but i always try my best to reach out to you guys because i understand how it feels don't be so nervous you have to be confident watching this video right now you are trying to improve your application by getting all the information you think you need so i'm giving you a thumbs up you are doing your best already so try to implement everything i've said go online do a lot of research don't rush to submit your application do a lot of research and most importantly remember if you have a good essay and you don't pass the situational judgment test then it doesn't make any sense so once you've presented a good essay start preparing for the situational judgment test so i think i've said enough i wish you guys the very best and um i'll see you guys in my next video where i'll be talking about my specialty cancer genomics and also talking about the role of a clinical scientist in cancer genomics give this video a thumbs up share it comment and i'll see you in my next one thank you so much bye